Hey guys, has here at Shield K9, and welcome to another edition of answering the YouTube comments. So back by popular demand, a lot of people seem to enjoy the last one. So we'll do this. We'll do another one, and I'm going to start with one that I'm going to answer in depth. Um, this one was on our "Let's Talk About K9 Lego" video. It's the last video that I did as of the filming of this video, and it's from Sean Edwards. And Sean writes. I am yet to see a proper good dog out of your GSD breeding program apart from Gage. You make so many litters and charge 5k per puppy, but I can't see more than one good dog you bred in your YouTube. They all seem lackluster. Please post some more vids of the best two-year-old dogs from your breeding as I'm going to get a puppy from you. Um, but all the dogs I like seem to be imports. Well, that's an interesting statement, and I think it deserves an in-depth answer. So number one, um, Sean... I would say, why is it that you like Gage more than Lego? What is it about Gage you think is better? Are we talking about working characteristics? Well, Gage is on the extreme end for working characteristics. He's, he, he's got a lot of hardness. He's got a lot of intensity. He has a lot of aggression. Um, you know, he has a lot of a lot of things. And the reality is most people couldn't handle it, nor would they want to. It wouldn't be fun for most people. It wouldn't be a fun experience to live with a dog like Gage. And it would be quite dangerous and, 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 and perhaps, you know, something uh, regrettable might happen. Maybe not to the handler, but, but to, to somebody else, right? Having a dog like Gage is not for most people. And I'm very well aware of that. I like a very specific type of dog, but I know and I understand that the vast majority of my clients have no need, wish, desire, or want to own a dog like Gage. In fact, a lot of people that are involved in working um, dog sports or, or even, you know, active, actual real working roles like detection or, or patrol work, they don't want dogs like Gage. Gage is a lot, a lot, a lot. And he's not a lot of people's cup of tea. So um, my, my, the goal of my breeding program is not to produce lots and lots of dogs like Gage because, quite frankly, most of them would end up probably getting put down. Um, so the only other thing I can think about is, okay, we're going to talk other if, – if we're not talking about working traits, okay – what are we talking about? Maybe we're talking about the size of the dog. Well, guess what? Lego's actually bigger than Gage, okay? So, uh, and Lego's 10 months old and Gage is 20 months old. So if you look at their size, uh, Lego's actually going to be a bigger dog. Uh, he has bigger bones than Gage does. He has a bigger head, so on and so forth. But let's look at a video of Lego and let's look at a video of some of our other dogs and we can talk. So here's Lego. All right, guys, let's watch... Uh, a little video of Lego, so I'll turn off there. So anyways, guys, um, you can see here, the one thing I really like about Lego, this is an eight month, he's eight months in this video, so still a puppy, right? Um, you can see that structure that I was talking about, I really like his structure. Um, here you can see some of the work. So one thing I really like about Lego is, is the grips, and I really like his barking, because the barking tells you a lot about a dog and protection work. If you know what to listen for, if you know what, what you're hearing and what you're seeing, uh, he's a dog that takes himself seriously, and he takes the work seriously, and I like that in a dog. He's not playing around, okay? The other thing I like about him is he has really good grips, okay? So here he is on a, tr on a hard sleeve, and you can see that the grips that he has, really good grips, good commitment, nice full grips. I didn't really have to do much to get them there. Those are genetic. Um, him and a bunch of other members of his uh, litter, a bunch of litter mates, all have those same grips. So fantastic grips, and I really like it. He also is very stable. And he's very easygoing, okay? Unlike Gage. Gage is intense, like I said, in, in a lot of things. Sorry, guys. So <clears throat> for most people, uh, Lego is, is, is perfect because he brings you that, you know, you can do dog sport with Lego. You can do protection work with Lego. Um, you know, he will. He has that protective instinct, but he's not extreme, right? You know, he's, he's not a dog that you have to, you know, watch with an eagle eye, so to speak, okay? So uh, for, for what most of my clients want, even for, for, for quite a few police departments, because he has quite, quite high object drive, he'll hunt for a ball, and, and he has really good ball drive, right? The only other thing I could think about, Sean, is maybe you're watching the training. So the training that we do with, um, you know, the training I'm doing with Gage is competition training. Okay, it's not training for, for, for like everyday life, okay? He has that training too, but the training that I show a lot on my YouTube channel with Gage is, is, is competition training where we're creating a really adrenalized dog that's doing very extreme things. 
that's not conducive to a dog that's going to, you know, live in a home and, and, and be a, a family protector. Or, it's not even necessary or, or, or conducive for a dog to do police work. Like it's, 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 it's very specific. It's very stylistic, the stuff that I'm doing with Gage. I know it looks impressive and it's really fun and it's very advanced training, but from a standpoint of what my clients want, whether we're talking about, you know, like I said, a family protector or police dog, that type of training is absolutely not very usable. So, um, that's not how we train dogs that are going into either of those places. So that's the only other thing maybe I could think of. Um, not that I'm saying that, uh, you know, Lego is extreme. He's most certainly not an extreme dog. He's a very nice, stable dog, you know, with good working traits, but not extreme working traits. Because usually when we have extreme working traits, there's other things that come with those traits that a lot of people don't want to deal with. But let's look at some of the other dogs that we've produced. Okay, guys. So the next dog I'm going to show you is a dog from our D litter. And uh, his name is Dargo. In this video, he's about 18 months. We sold him at about a year of age as a family protection dog. Now, this dog is, uh, I, the owners uh, are out west, and they're doing some PSA-style stuff with him now. So he's about 18 months old in this video, so this is going to be the uh, hidden sleeve carjacking scenario, right? Um, now, again, the video is not particularly good, unfortunately, just because of the, uh, the quality of video I received. But as you can see, the dog's undergoing pressure, um, and, uh, you know, what Dargo brought to the table was crushing grip, grips. Now, Dargo, for those of you wondering, is uh, he was a uh, Onyx to Kina. Okay, so my male Onyx was was bred to Kina. Um, if you want to see Kina, you can see her on our website. She's retired now, but um, this was an Onyx Kina puppy. And um, there were a couple puppies in that litter that were uh, 100 pounds. And then another puppy, he was he ended up actually being quite smaller. Uh, he went, I'll, I'll actually show him later, but anyways... Let's uh, let's do a little more here. So you can, you guys are going to see now. There's going to be an attack on the handler here. Okay. So there you go. You see nice entry there from the dog. Okay. We'll go ahead now and we'll show another uh, little thing here. And this is an 18-month-old dog from our breeding and training program. Okay. Um, I think there's going to be another frontal attack here. Let me just speed it up. All right. So I want you to watch the dog. Dargo really had one hell of a grip on him. So you can see a 100-pound dog, and he's moving, right? Nice, fast entries, good confidence, good power. His owners are very, very happy with him. So that's Dargo. That's from Onyx and Kina. And for those of you wondering, uh, Lego is from Onyx and Glitzy. Okay, so let's, uh, let's look at another dog. Okay, guys, so the next video we're going to look at is Onyx Vera, and this is... Uh, this dog, I think he's about two years old now. In this video, though, he's about eight months. And I'm just going to show you a little bit of him at eight months, okay? Um, and this was Viper, and uh, he's now called Rudy. And I'm going to show you uh, where Viper ended up shortly. This is just a little bit of puppy work we were doing with him. But as you can see, yes, nice full grips, good barking, you know, again, a good dog. So now let's see what happened with Viper. Where did Viper end up? Okay, guys. Well, it looks like Viper ended up in a police department as a dual-purpose patrol dog. This is him when he had uh, just completed his course. And then let's uh, look and see how Viper did over the last uh, six months. Okay, guys. So this is just a, another quick little uh, picture of, of Viper that I'm pulling off their Instagram. And uh, as you can see, uh, this is what a dog that's more mature from our breeding program looks like. I don't know too many people that would have a problem with this. A little bit of an update here with Viper. Uh, they call him Rudy, by the way. Um, it looks like he uh, tracked down somebody. There's a whole write-up here on all the things that he did. Either way, again, you know, this is just what a dog from our breeding program is able to do. And it's, it's funny you say this because, in my opinion, uh, you know, Viper and Lego, they're a very similar quality. Um, I wouldn't really put one too far above the other. Um, if anything, if I had to give an edge, I might actually give Lego an edge over Viper if I was really kind of being hardcore and evaluating just the working traits of the dog. So there is that. Just uh, one more little uh, image of Viper here. Uh, I guess he tracked down somebody else. And by the way, shout out to Canine Mike uh, for getting Viper situated with a department, uh, you know, that uh, was able to use his services. 
um, and they're doing a wonderful job with Viper. It looks like he's uh, really doing a lot of good down there. Okay, guys, the next dog is Dougie Vom Shield, and uh, this is a dog again from our D-Litter. Um, I think he ended up being about 60, 70 pounds, so he's a bit on the smaller side, but his brother, as I showed you earlier, Dargo, <laughs> ended up being 100 pounds, and you see sometimes that size disparity in litter. Still a very good-looking dog. Um, and, uh, you know, he's doing good work for the transit authority as a uh, detection dog. So that's another dog from our breeding program. I believe in this picture, he's about 14 months. Again, shout out to canine Mike, by the way, for, uh, um, you know, Mike actually raised Dougie and, and, uh, placed him with the transit authority. So shout out again to canine Mike on that one. Um, you know, I, I really like giving Mike my dogs cause I know he always is going to do a good job with them. So Okay, guys, so this is a, uh, a herder puppy from our breeding program. This is him at 10 months. So I, you can see the, the long attack, good speed, nice grips. I don't know anybody at 10 months that would be disappointed in that type of performance. Um, you know, you're asking about two-year-old dogs. The reason why I don't have two-year-old dogs for my breeding program is because they're trained and ready to go usually before two years of age. Um, I don't keep them into their maturity because it's not necessary. Of course, I'm selecting dogs and training dogs that are able to handle that training at a young age. Now, of course, if you see the same dog at two to three years of age, the dog's going to be physically a lot more impressive. And even in the work is going to be a lot more impressive, just as you would see the difference between a man and a boy. But suffice to say that uh, this dog is definitely getting the job done. And this is an example of uh, the dogs from our breeding program. <laughs> Big old Arco. 10 months old in this video. Can you imagine what he's like now at two and a half? The next dog I'm going to show you is an Onyx Vera puppy. Oh, by the way, I guess I should have mentioned Arco is um, Rex, which was a Malinois, to uh, Charlie, which was one of our German Shepherd females. So this puppy here, this is a Onyx Vera puppy, um, and this is her at eight months of age, okay? So again, a young dog. If anybody knows anything about working dogs, if you see the type of uh, speed and power and grips that this, this puppy is showing, you know that uh, you're seeing quality right here, okay? And this was Ruby Bomb Shield. Was, she is, she still exists. The owners would not sell her back to me. So, you know, I don't know, I, I, don't, I wouldn't call her mediocre. And she was a nice hard female too. She could handle a little bit of pressure. The next dog I'm going to show you is Kojak. Kojak was Onyx Amelia, okay? And for those of you that like a substantial dog with a big bark, Kojak is definitely that. So just to give you a little thing, and he, he has one help, a grip. I'm doing some basic work with him here in this video. I think he's only a year old in this, right? And we're just working on some defense work there. Um, but just to kind of give you an idea. Okay, so that's Kojak. Okay, guys, so uh, this is another um, dog from our breeding. I think he's about 14 months, if not a year old in this video. So again, quite young. Um, but uh, you guys can see a little bit about him here. I'm just doing a little protection scenario. Big, beautiful, sable dog. Um, you know, and the grips, again, with, uh, with Arthur were very good. He's a family protection dog now um and he's biting a hidden sleeve and you can see that he has a uh, very nice grips there um he's a good size uh, young dog um i don't again know anybody that would be uh, unhappy with this dog or consider him uh you know disturbingly mediocre <laughs> so um you know i think we could do this all day long at the end of the day uh there is a reason why i'm breeding Okay, and it's not because I'm getting everything that I want from Europe. I import from Europe and I breed. And the reason why is I can't I can't breed enough to fulfill all the needs that I have from a, a working dog perspective. Like I just can't produce enough puppies. All right. Now if you want to have the European experiments, by all means go ahead. Go see what you get. You know, maybe you'll get lucky and, and get something good. But there's a reason that I started a breeding program. You know, my staff recently came to me and they're like, why are you still buying dogs from, from outside? I mean, we're getting all that we need from our breeding program. And I say, well, you know, unfortunately, guys, I just don't want to do as many breedings as it would take to fulfill the needs that we have in terms of dogs. So, you know, um, 
our breeding program produces very well. Now, of course, if I was really careful with how I videoed everything and I, I did a lot of like, you know, very fancy video and stuff, I could make the dogs look like 10 times better. But um, that's not what I do on my channel and that's not what I do in real life. You know, my dogs are what they are. But I can tell you this, most everybody that buys a dog from me is very, very happy with the dog, whether they're buying a puppy or whether they're buying a trained dog because I don't blow smoke. And I think, Sean, just based on your comment, I would venture to guess that you're the type of person that likes smoke blown. And I'm just not that guy. And I know there's people that call me all the time. Hey, Haz, you know, we're looking for this and that and everything else. And I know the next guy that they call is going to tell them all that and more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, the dog will be great with everybody he or she meets. You know, you, everybody can pet him. And don't worry, he'll know. He'll protect you in real life, too. He's a monster. He's a savage, blah, 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 blah. Whatever you want to hear, pumpkin. You know, that's that's what some of these guys do. And I get why they do it, because it sells the dogs. I just don't have it in me to be that guy. I'm going to be extremely realistic to you about what the dog can and cannot do. I'm going to be extremely realistic with you about the quality of the dog, the working quality, the quality as a family dog. We don't all look for the same things. And it's important to understand that. So I'll tell you this, Sean. If you're really interested in a in a super dog, you know, some of you are like, yeah, I want more. I want more. I want extreme. No problem. I have extreme dogs. Okay, I don't always market them. I usually sell them privately. If you want an extreme dog, if you want a dominant powerhouse of a dog, a monster, I have those in stock on a regular basis. I always keep a few in the back, so to speak. But don't call me or text me or email me about those type of dogs. Oh, but, you know, they also, my kids' friends visit and this and that. Don't, don't tell me about that. Because then I know that you're not all about it. You don't really understand what it entails to own a dog like that. And it's okay. Like I've said before, the vast majority of people, that is not a dog for you. Okay? And it won't be fun for you. And the most important thing, when you buy a dog, whether it's a puppy or a trained dog, it needs to be enjoyable. Otherwise, what the heck are you doing it for? It's not good for you and it's not good for the dog. And I'm all about the right dog for the right situation. If you call me and say, hey, Haz, I'm interested in, in, let's say, Victor. I want Victor. And I've had several, I haven't had a bunch of people. Hey, Haz, I want Victor. And hey, you know, they tell me a little bit about their life, what they want out of the dog, what they're going to do with the dog. And I say, I don't think Victor's for you. I think this other dog that I have is for you, but not this dog or vice versa right? It's for me, it's not about selling a dog. It's about making sure that it's the best possible match, even if it costs me the sale. So uh, this was a really long answer to your uh, very uh, simple statement, Sean. So I hope it helps you. And I think I've shown enough dogs and it's time to move on. Okay, guys. So the next comment I'm going to read, stop with the fat dogs video. It's on our stop with the fat dogs video. And it's by Adam Slater, your second more, sorry, guys, your second more silver looking dog looks malnourished. I think he's trying to say more slimmer. I don't know. I really wouldn't consider that the definition of healthy. Not saying this as a fur baby owner or anything either. And you know, it's funny, my no fat dogs video really got a lot of uh, uh, feedback like that. There's a lot of people that were like, hey, thanks for the video. It really is nice for someone to finally clear that up. And then, of course, I had the usual, oh, my God, the dog's dying, blah, blah, blah. It's so funny to me. And I know most of the people screaming on the YouTube comments are, 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 are themselves fat and probably have never seen a bone on their body either. <laughs> Listen, fat body. That, the, that dog, uh, the Malwa that I showed, you know, super ripped dog. Uh, I wish I looked like him, okay? Very low body fat. You could see every muscle on his body. Yes, you could see his ribs, as I explained that you should. Um, he's in incredible physical condition. Believe me, if I look like that, I'd probably do all my videos shirtless. Okay, guys, the next uh, little comment here from John Bibb. What is the hardest dog you have right now? I think the baddest dog that I have right now is Blade. And uh, Blade is, is, is giving me a run for my money in that, you know, I thought I'd be able to kind of um, tame him down a little bit. Blade, Blade most certainly, he ha he's a stable dog, but he's also a very strong and dominant dog. You know, I I'm not afraid that Blade's going to maul the kids or anything like that. Most certainly not. But I am afraid that he's going to completely take advantage of anybody that is less than firm with him. Because Blade, he's huge. He's, he's quite a large dog. He's a two-year-old black uh, German Shepherd, by the way. Um, you know, he has really good drive. And, you know, that dog, that dog is sharp as a tack. And he has 
an ego a mile wide. Okay, and that's really what you're looking for in a, in a, you're talking about a hard dog, a strong dog, you know, a dominant dog, Blade fits those categories. Now, he has been fixed. I bought him, this is the first dog I ever bought that was neutered. I never buy neutered dogs. I always buy dogs that are intact. Um, and I know that someone along the road, probably when he was about a year, they just couldn't handle Blade, while well, his previous owners couldn't handle him, and they neutered him, um, and that didn't work, of course, so they returned him to the breeder, um, and and then uh, Blade was sold to me. Um, and I just couldn't... I, at first, I was like, a neuter dog? I'm not buying him. They brought Blade to me, um, and I was like, ah, oh, whatever, I'll test him. And I tested I was like, oh my God, he's he's so good, I ha- I just couldn't resist. There's, you know, there's just something in me that, you know, when, when the hair goes up on the back of your neck, I said, this is a dog. This is a strong dog. This is a dog that, 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 that has something to do in this world, whether it's in law enforcement, whether, you know, it's with the right individual as an executive protection dog, there's nothing this dog cannot do. And I just couldn't let him pass by. So I purchased him. So Blade is, if you want a lot of dog, Blade's the dog. So the next one, the next little, uh, the next comment is from Berserk PK. Hey, Haz, have you talked about Berlin's new dog laws? It seems they are pretty strict and many German police dogs have been removed from service. Yes, it's what I've been talking about for a long time. You know, banning devices basically means you're, you're banning essentially by proxy the use of certain types of dogs. So you know, dogs like Blade, you know, dogs like Gage, dogs like that have a lot of confidence, a lot of strength, a lot of courage, a lot of independence, dogs that need rules, dogs that need, you know, corrections from time to time. When you ban the training and the use of specific devices, when you drive it underground, you remove these dogs from the mainstream, you remove these dogs from service. And, um, you know, you're, you're going to see that directly, both in the quality of the training now available in, in, in most of Western Europe and in the quality of the dogs now that the police are looking for. We've already started to see it, right? So like you asked me about the hardest dog I had and I said, Blade, my concern with Blade is that he would be too much for a lot of police departments, right? Like like the average officer, oh, I can't, I can't deal with him, you know, <laughs> he's too much, right? And it's not that he's a bad dog, it's just that he's Listen, he has a lot of character. He's a type A personality. He's a, he's a go-getter, right? That That's a dog, like I said, that you're going to conquer the world with. But if you're not about conquering the world, he's probably not going to be about living with you. <laughs> or he's about conquering you anyways. He's going to conquer something. So, you know, those types of dogs, you're going to see less and less of them. And I'm going to do my very best in my little tiny corner of the world to preserve them as much as I possibly can, to gather them to me. Dogs like Blade, when I see them, I buy them. Dogs like 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 Onyx, you know, dogs like this, where they have that spark, they have that special power, that something. I see those dogs, you know, they make me a little bit afraid. I look in their eyes and the goosebumps. Those are the dogs. I buy those dogs. I breed those dogs. I try to always have some of those dogs on hand. Okay, so this uh, last video was on a, um, a video. I have an e-collar training a husky. Um, I think I was doing recalls with the husky or healing or something. Anyways, Miranda comments, this dog is wearing an e-collar. How do we know that if the e-collar is removed, she will continue to behave during distractions? Mine only listens with an e-collar on. Well, Miranda, that is a training failure on your part. But I always ask people, why, why do you want to remove the e-collar? To this day, up, up until you, you started training properly, you always had to put a leash on your dog, yes? You would go out in public with a leash, yes? Well, now all you have to do is put on an e-collar. That's a step up. For me, the goal is not to remove the e-collar. For me, the goal is to have a dog that is behaving to the best of his or her ability and a dog that's able, that we're able to maximize our experience with one another. I want to go off leash with you. I want you to be able to go and smell the daisies and run around and roll in the field and, and, and live the life of an off leash dog. If the price of that is that you have to wear a collar, no problem. No big deal. You wear a collar anyways, and it's better than wearing a six foot leash that, that I have to drag you around by all the time anyways. But I will say this, if your dog is e-collar wise, I have other videos on this and I have videos of, of me actually, because again, I'm a shower, I'm not a talker. We have videos um, showing dogs that we've trained without an e-collar doing a variety of things from trialing to walking completely off leash in a city, okay? So with this, guys, I think I'm gonna end, um, I'm gonna end this little segment of replying to the comments. I hope you enjoy the video. Like, subscribe, comment below. It helps the algorithm. 
Um, if you dislike the video, feel free, dislike it, go for it. Um, and, uh, you know, if you, if you got any ideas for, for a video that you want me to do next, feel free to comment below, check out our online courses at shieldk9.ca. And if you're interested, um, you know, in a working dog or in a family dog, feel free to contact us, uh, shieldk9dogs.com or even through shieldk9.ca, you can see our available dogs. Um, we always have a plethora of dogs and puppies on hand and we have the right one for you or your working situation. Thank you for watching.